Hey, it's Mike here, and today the results are in for a randomized control trial on people with Alzheimer's by Dr. Dean Ornish, and the study itself describes the diet as a whole food vegan diet, as well as some other lifestyle interventions. We'll parse those out, but I've been waiting for this one, and really quickly, this was one of the main reasons that I initially shifted toward a plant-based diet 14 years ago. I was very afraid of Alzheimer's because as a child, I lived with my grandma who had Alzheimer's. Now, this was a lady who was previously not violent, all of a sudden, was like violent toward me, my mom saved me, and then she was put in a nursing home, so this one hits like pretty close to home, nursing or my actual home. No, so this was an important reason for me to shift. I'll talk about why, but it was mostly just theoretical reasons back then when I shifted, though they were pretty valid even then. So we're gonna look at this study, we're gonna look at the results, and look at one little aspect that annoys me a bit as a vegan, and we're also gonna look at examples of people who have had this cognitive impairment and reverse it to a degree. Did this help reverse some of the symptoms of Alzheimer's? Yes, yes and that is one person that's in the study and one person that is not very interesting stuff. So let's just go. I don't wanna to spend too much time on background before I get into the results, but I feel like we need to cover just the key point here. And that is all the way back into like the early 1900s, Dr. Alzheimer, the one that discovered Alzheimer's disease described atherosclerotic or sort of artery disease changes in the brains of these patients. And yes, I've shown you these images a bunch of times before. You can see the brain artery sections of people with Alzheimer's versus normal people, and yeah, Alzheimer's is clogged brain arteries. I have a whole video on that. So where does diet come in then? Well, we're talking about the cardiovascular system and we have several studies showing improvements in that, whether it's people with heart disease or whatever, and that is likely due to perhaps the lowering of inflammation, but also just the improvement of artery function. And then of course, slowing the progression of the disease, and that is very likely due to the lower saturated fat and cholesterol consumption, which of course results in that lower LDL or bad cholesterol we see in vegans and high LDL is causally linked to atherosclerosis the same thing that's happening in these Alzheimer's brains of course there's a bit more going on as well there but that's the main point all right getting to the main study we're talking about this one here which was published not that long ago before filming but I have been preparing for this to come out it's a randomized control trial in the journal of Alzheimer's research and therapy and this is one that I thought might have even been five years long like Ornish's previous study on heart disease because there was a woman interviewed on CNN who had been on this diet for five years, but it turns out that this study is just looking at out to 20 weeks or about five months, really not that long, which I think is kind of cool because if we can see any results at that time frame, then people will be more motivated to make changes and not think they have to do it for five years before seeing anything. And they're comparing this whole diet and lifestyle intervention to a control group. That control group is just standard Alzheimer's care. So they're people who are still getting some care. And the number of subjects, they were aiming for 100 initially, but it turns out, you know, they're recruiting during the pandemic and they, ended up with 50 in the end, but you know, we'll see. They still have statistically significant results in many areas. And a key point here is that these aren't people who have super advanced dementia or Alzheimer's. These are people who have Alzheimer's that has led to mild cognitive impairment or dementia. And in particular, they have to be over a certain score on the mocha scale, which no is not you being rated on how well you drink a mocha latte. It's the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Test for dementia, not as good tasting. And mild, while it sounds mild, and it's obviously not as bad as severe, is still very notable, just to alzheimers.gov. Quote, signs of mild cognitive impairment include losing things often, forgetting to go to important events or appointments, and having more trouble coming up with words than other people of the same age. Now, everybody forgets things to a degree, but not like this, we're talking about you know, worse than people your same age. And it could be the case that a lot of this mild cognitive impairment is driven by actual artery changes. Perhaps they're just more mild. They haven't fully taken over yet. Now there's a lot more details that we can go through a bit later in this video, but I just wanna hit on those results right now. Well, first of all, we have this chart, you know, which is one of the stars of the shows here. We're looking at overall clinical dementia rating, which in the control group went up as expected in people with Alzheimer's, but the wild part, that plant-based diet group went down. That means their overall clinical dementia severity 
was decreasing, which is like blowing my mind. It should blow a lot of people's mind. You know, a lot of people did not think that this was possible. Anyway, we have another chart here, which is the Alzheimer's cognition score, which followed the same trend, but wasn't statistically significant. And then we also have a third chart here of clinical dementia progression, which continued in the control group, but stopped in that plant group. I'm just gonna call them the plant group. And then we have something called the clinical global impression of change, which I think is just a bad <laughs> name for it. But we're looking at somebody on a Zoom call, like a clinician judging the dementia rates of these people blindly as much as is possible, the study says, because you know, someone's gonna get on there and if they have mild dementia, they might just be like, and then I had to eat the vegan diet. All the carrots reminded me of my old boyfriend in the 40s. And they're like, oh crap, I know which one they were. And I had to go ahead and just make a chart for this. And we can ask, what is the number of people that improved in this perceived overall dementia cognitive function score in the control group, the standard Alzheimer's care? Zero people did. But then when we're looking at that plant group, we're talking about 10 people improving, which is awesome. And then we can fill in the rest of the chart with different degrees. And we can see all the way down to the people who got you know, moderately worse, three of them in the control group and zero in the plant group. Also twice as many people with minimal worsening in the control group than the plant group. So just this picture here is pretty amazing. If you were to look at these two interventions, whether it's standard care or this plant group and lifestyle, we have a group that you would want your loved one who is facing cognitive decline to be in and one that you wouldn't want them to be in. That's the key takeaway here. But you may be wondering if the intervention was so good, why were there even people that had some worsening in that plant group? Well, first of all, we have unique cases and causes of dementia. I mean, maybe somebody's lead levels are just through the charts and it doesn't matter what diet you put them on, it's still gonna be getting worse. But then we also just have overall adherence and thankfully they looked at this and they did get a pretty clear picture. They say, quote, we found a statistically significant dose response correlation between the degree of lifestyle changes in both groups and changes in most measures of cognition and function testing. So the people that did worse were very much less likely to actually adopt that plant-based diet and other lifestyle changes than the people that did better. And then we have some other interesting findings. First of all, we have a pretty significant drop in LDL or bad cholesterol in that vegan diet plus lifestyle group over the control group. It's like a 25% drop. Again, high LDL causally linked to atherosclerosis. So this adds up here completely. And they point to a particular finding that they said might be you know, the best biomarker change they saw. And that was a beta amyloid blood ratio. You know, this is amyloid beta 42 to 40 ratio. As another study says, low plasma ratio is associated with a high amyloid beta deposition in the brain. And from the Ornish trial in the intervention group, they saw a 6.4% increase in the right direction in that plant group, and then an 8.3% decrease in that control group. Not good for them and highly statistically significant. And like other Ornish studies, he looked at telomeres, which are those caps on the end of your DNA that protect them. In previous studies, he did find that the plant-based and other lifestyle intervention group had a lengthening of telomeres, more protection, you know, previously thought not to be possible as well. But in this case, we're seeing a slight increase, but it just wasn't statistically significant. It wasn't enough. Maybe there weren't enough people. All right, now I'm gonna get to my gripe of the study before we get to these amazing anecdotes to match the research. Well, first of all, we have the diet itself, which yes, is described as a whole food vegan diet. There's no animal products being consumed at all, as well as focusing on whole grains, legumes, and cutting out harmful fats and refined carbohydrates, which is great. But this is where I just face palmed really hard. And that is if you look through their list of supplements, which is quite long actually, it's like they just threw a lot of stuff that could work at the wall. One of those things is fish oil supplements. I know vegans are like, oh my God, just barely, because we know that you can get the same exact omega-3s from algae. That's where the fish get them. This didn't need to happen. It could have been considered a fully vegan study instead of a vegan diet plus other stuff study. And I was like, why the heck did they do this? I looked to the funding and I will say this is funded by a ton of great like nonprofit and charitable organizations and you gotta get money together. But then you can see there a little bit further down in the funding, Nordic Naturals, which of course sells these fish oil supplements. So now the study based around an actual vegan diet 
It's thrown in fish oil and is now going to be used likely by certain companies and stuff to sell fish oil for Alzheimer's, which is you know very disappointing, but I, you know, I guess you gotta get money. There's a lot of money that you need to get for these studies. And if there are authors in the study that aren't necessarily ethically vegan, you know, this is what happens. Anyway, they did quite a few other supplements as well. CoQ10, which is an antioxidant, as well as lion's mane, which I have a whole video on that as well. But this brings us to that sort of annoying situation we see with these type of studies where it's like, what actually caused this? Was it the diet? It likely wasn't the exercise. I was like 30 minutes of walking, which we wouldn't see this type of result with. Was it the meditation that they also added? No, we don't have studies showing that it could be that. Lion's mane, we've seen some improvements in like one low quality study that I covered in my lion's mane video for cognitive impairment. But, you know, diet, in my opinion, is likely the most powerful factor here. Anyway, let's just hop into some of these cool anecdotes. We have, first of all, this woman who was interviewed by Sanjay Gupta on CNN, and I think it's like a week until the whole thing comes out, but right now we just have a teaser. And Sanjay met with her five years ago, and then again recently, and you know, from his reaction, she's doing amazingly and appears to have improved her cognitive impairment. How are you doing now, do you think, as compared to five years ago? Um much better, really? much better. Did this help reverse some of the symptoms of Alzheimer's? Yes, yes. I think she's doing very well. Does it surprise you? Yes, after seeing her mother and grandmother, yes. Because I was figuring by this time she'd have been at home or something. And she says that she used to like eat veal every day and now doesn't. My choice of a meal before this was a breaded veal cutlet. I haven't had one in five years. So they should have called her story from veal to healed. <laughs> anyway, and then we also have a video on the YouTube channel Vegan Linked. This is Jeff going around interviewing a ton of vegan people. He just finds this person in a random vegan restaurant, finds out that they had some cognitive impairment improvements, and it turns out that this guy was just missing five years of his life in terms of his memory. Here he is. In the morning that I get up and couldn't remember where my cereal box was we realized that we had a problem. I had lost, we're still not sure exactly how much, four or five years of uh, recent long-term memory. And they're still completely gone to this day. I look at those photos and it's like I've been photoshopped into them. If you go back further, my memory's fine. It's like a file drawer got thrown out and I wasn't making long-term memories, apparently. Got an appointment with our doctor and visited with her, and after a couple of visits, uh, my wife got an email from her, and the final line was, uh, our goal is to keep him independent as long as possible. But then at the request of the neurologist, Dr. Shurzai, he went on a vegan diet, and here he is again. Within, literally within three weeks to a month of going plant-based, uh, we were on it, we, I drove down to a, a sort of a normal uh, uh, spring vacation trip to the Outer Banks. And I still remember that trip, sitting here today, two and a half years later. I started making new memories within 30 days. Yeah, so he was just unable to make new memories for like five years, goes on a plant-based diet, and within three weeks, he's all of a sudden remembering everything after that. So again, just an anecdote, but now we're seeing more of a picture of research backing that up. But I gotta be fair and show both sides. We have another story of a carnivore dieter, Dr. Bobby D. Cutlets, who also claims to have reversed his Alzheimer's on a carnivore diet. Yes, I reversed my Alzheimer's disease eating pure meat. And uh, yeah, he, he, where'd my steak go? Uh, I seem to uh, have misplaced it. Why is there steak sauce all over my shirt? Ah, oh, this keeps happening. And then just a final word on mechanism. Again, we have a bunch of different changes here, so we don't really know what it is, but we have seen diet be able to do this in terms of a plant-based diet or an Esselstyn study, a fully vegan diet, literally opening up arteries within weeks, increasing blood flow, likely through increased artery function and artery dilation. And so if you have a certain part of your brain that is starved, perhaps, that is enough to just get some more blood flow where you weren't getting it before, whether it was a memory center or whatever. In Esselstyn's study, we saw that in just three and a half weeks. And in the Ornish study previously on heart disease, we saw a fourfold increase in blood flow, which is wild, you know, in these people with advanced heart disease in both of those studies cases. So, you know, instead of the heart getting more blood flow, 
perhaps it's the brain. I don't think that we're seeing just massive shrinking of plaques in this situation, especially a few months out. I mean, maybe there's some, we still need more studies on that, but at that age, it's likely not happening. But I think a key point here is that it doesn't have to happen. But I think as we learn more about lifestyle changes, we might know how to tweak that better and actually get more real shrinkage. And that's why I think we should be literally funding, pouring billions of dollars into this because it's our leading killer. But no, uh, we don't want to pour that much money into this for some reason. It's annoying. Anyway, in the end, I'm really happy that this study came out. These are results I've been waiting for. They definitely solidify <laughs> one of the reasons I initially changed changed my diet. You know, and obviously this could help a lot of people. Losing your memory is super scary, but the more tools we have to fight that, the better. And again, I am annoyed about that fish oil being thrown in there, but if there are people that truly believe that's playing a role, you can get the same stuff directly from algae as a vegan source, so you can still be a practicing vegan in terms of ethics and recreate this sort of study formula with the diet lifestyle and the supplements. But besides that, I'm really grateful that this is being done and it just adds to this long line of Dr. Ornish's research and just reminds me that we need to be doing more research on these super important diseases. Anyway, let me know down below what you thought about all this. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.